anyways uh okay and then i've started all right hello everyone i have done uh against my better judgment another one of these because first off there is a big reaction to the first one and then second off i had two people approach me that are very very famous within the community being like hey when am I gonna get a podcast? And I'm like, well, I guess I gotta do more podcasts. And today we have one of those two famous people, Mr. Andersam of the Little Alchemist Helper channel. Would you like to introduce yourself? Well, hello. Yes. Hi, I am Mr. Andersam. Famous? I, I don't know about that. But um, Mr. Andersam indeed uh, been playing Little Alchemist since... Uh, I had an iPad mini. And if you don't know what an iPad mini is, you'll have to Google that. I don't even think they make them anymore. <laughs> um, but that's when I started. And then uh, eventually I segued that into starting a little YouTube channel with Tap Dog. Um, unfortunately, life kind of got in the way a little bit and I uh, turned it over to him. But, you know, I'm still around. Um, one of the dinosaurs, one of the relics still hanging around in the game. Um, Still hop on Discord every once in a while. Mostly, uh, mostly focus on the deck optimizer that I built. So, like, if you actually want to see me or get a hold of me, post in there. That's where you're most likely to get noticed, or just at me. Like, I'll I'll respond. But that's uh that's kind of where I come from. You you covered so much ground with that introduction. I was gonna be like, yeah, like, cause first off, you're definitely definitely famous because you have. An entire channel in the Little Alchemist Discord server straight up named after you because the tool that the channel is named after is also named after you. So I'm like, you're definitely famous at that level. <laughs> yeah, I regret. I don't know. Regrets maybe not that I... Like, putting my name on that is so silly. Like, <laughs> I, I just did it because, like, honestly, at the time, like meaning when the forums existed and before monumental took over like the, it it wasn't the only one like this was just mine like and then it very quickly morphed into this is the one and then my name just kind of got permanently stuck on it like i like i built it I, I didn't seal it for anyone like i you know certainly had help from the community and, and but i don't know I don't, I don't think I necessarily deserve all of the credit that I that I get for that thing. See, that that's actually really interesting. I didn't realize there were other optimizers out there. And this is why I was like, okay, let's get let's get Andersam next here. Because first off, like you I, I you've watched the podcast between me and Jark. Jark and I are like basically representative jark is pretty representative of the new era of lil alchemist i'm representative of the dead era and then i was like oh if i get andersam on i can get all this fun information about like what the before times of little alchemist was which sounds like it was like a thousand years ago but it was only like what how old's little alchemist now i think it's like so they had the anniversary recently like 12 or 11 years old now which right. which is really old in the like gaming space but it's not that old relatively speaking <laughs> well okay so here's here's context like i understand i'm not young anymore but i was young once and i do still remember it when I started playing Little Alchemist, like I said, I started playing on an iPad mini. That is because I did not own a smartphone. I was still using a flip phone. <laughs> so you're like, it wasn't that long ago. No, no, this like, like, yeah, it was released on the iPhone, but it was in an era where it wasn't necessarily ubiquitous that everyone had a smartphone. Like I still had friends who had Blackberries and oh my God. like, <laughs> well, like, that's it wild. Was, I, I it like, was, I forgot about that. It was that a long as well. time ago, but at the same time, not really. Yeah. Because, like, that's actually that's a common story with a lot of people who join Little Alchemist, where it's like they've gone in and out of the game several times. And, like, like now that like my memories are like getting triggered here, where like my first time playing Little Alchemist as well was on like the thick family iPad shared between everybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, you know, 
that's what we had. We had one iPad that was for me, my wife, and our kids. And I would frequently uh, just like take the iPad with audiobooks on it for a commute. And then when I would be like sitting in my car on a lunch break, I'd kick that thing open because like back then, like there was actually like, you, you want to talk about way back, there was like a revolt when they first tried to force you to always be connected to the internet in order to play the game. Um, <laughs> because, it, and so like, I understood the argument. The argument was if we allow offline play, people will hack their game. And there was people doing it and giving themselves like the full library, giving themselves a thousand gems or whatever and infinite dust. And like, they were like active cheaters. And the old staff, because the community desperately liked being able to play the game without connecting to the server, as it was an era when not everyone was playing on a smartphone and you would walk away from Wi-Fi and still want to play. It was crazy. It was crazy how many people would just like blatantly cheat. And so they got like very, very fed up. And this is not they monumental. This is they Chinzilla, the original owners of the game, yep. got very frustrated with people cheating. Um, but their dedicated like hardcore fan base still wanted to be able to go offline and play, go offline and like still have it. Like there was there was stories on the forum of people like, no, I'm I'm hiking the Appalachian Trail and I only connect to Wi-Fi every three days, but I love playing this game. Please don't force it. And it's like that's nuts. That's nuts to think about. And so like yeah, you connect to the game, everything would work. Uh the only thing that you needed Wi-Fi for was the portal. events and arena yeah <laughs> I, originally you didn't even well okay originally originally you did there was a time where you could play arena offline what you yeah you would cash a whole bunch of arena decks for you and you could play them like you would eventually crash it if you went too long but it cashed it and you could play arena offline um and then when you reconnected it would inject all of your like wins and losses and it would just it would just work no that's wild like this is why i was like oh we gotta get okay uh spoiler warning the other person who had also approached me like hey when's my turn on the podcast was jokovic but i was like oh. i'll save jokovic for when i talk about like the competitive nature of little alchemist and i'm like you you've already like expanded my knowledge of what little alchemist was like in the past like dramatically here because <laughs> yeah. like well like, it, it was barely even competitive back then I, yeah. like the the rewards so like i'm talking this is pre prior to the release of extra like alchemy powers so like no hp plus oh, no yeah. xp plus no lucky like all of those none of those existed no tiebreaker um, yeah 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 all all prior to that um i don't think you earned stars you earned a different currency in the arena like your ranking system wasn't based on stars if i remember correctly um the deck and matchmaking was not random but really 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 close like it was it was just like pure chaos and <laughs> um the in order to be the top of the leaderboard which i couldn't do because i you know at this time i was still new enough where i didn't have the cards to be competitive like um i had the 10 event gold combo cards and a bunch of silver and bronze uh, combo cards and very 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 limited final forms um and so I wasn't competitive, but you would basically just get a randomly play people. It didn't really affect, from what I remember, like how many points you had didn't change the player basis that you got given. So like you basically were just playing random members of the community. And that's why this like caching thing worked because it just cashed your next like 20 games from what I remember. Um, and you can go do them whenever. 
that that is that is wild because like okay yeah. first off that sort of shows sort of like little alchemist was never intended to be a competitive game the competitive aspects of the game sort of emerged after the game was built because like whenever there's a game where you can face other people competitiveness will follow and like it feels as if chinzilla before monumental <laughs> company that owned Lil alchemist before monumental was like like i i've talked about this in the past where like it felt like they kept adding things retroactively to try and meet the demands of the player base and like this like this doesn't prove it, but this seems to line up more with this retroactive adding of things rather than this was the plan from the start. Because, like, obviously, we can't ask Chinzilla anymore. The company dissolved? If I am remembering correctly, I have actually no idea, though. But so the... you want the history on that? Oh, do <laughs> I? I was talking... Yeah. Um, I don't know you know, the founders of Chinzilla personally, but um, definitely spoken with them. The primary person on that team's name was John. He was, you know, a, a lot like Monty, where just very community focused, very community centric. Um, well, they were originally publishing through a website called Congregate. Congregate still exists, but uh the whole point of that website was flash games so now that flash is no longer supported i have no idea what's even there <laughs> um when congregate was realizing that flash was going to get murdered like literally murdered by adobe because they were going to refuse to support it any longer they started trying to make moves to keep themselves be a viable company so this isn't Chinzilla, this is Congregate, who was the publisher for Chinzilla. Um, and that's when they acquired Little Alchemist. Um, they wanted not necessarily the game. They wanted some legally protected intellectual property that Chinzilla had filed copyright for. Um, and that is like, it's silly to, to think of it as an like protected copyright, but it's the concept of taking two cards, merging them to, together and getting an output. Congregate wanted that um, so that they could release animation. Animation throwdown. showdown. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like that was, that was the big driver in Chinzilla being not dissolved, but they literally bought out the whole company Um kept little alchemist on life support barely um and then dumped everything into animation throwdown like to the point where they were advertising for that on tv like and because they thought that with um so i guess if if you guys don't know animation throwdown is a card game that's like little alchemist it has that like fusion property um but all of the cards are characters from fox cartoons minus the simpsons and yeah. that's because the simpsons is already has exclusive rights through a different game development company and i don't remember which one that is so it's futurama american dad bob's burgers uh, and family guy yes and uh, yeah, like I was looking, I like I was suddenly Googling congregate in the background here to just look at their front page. And it, it does look to be just a bunch of shovelware and sort of like mobile time waster games for lack of better terms. Like you yeah. got stuff like Firestone, Idol RPG and Mighty Party and like. And then animation throwdown, like the second I opened up the website, it was front and center first thing you see. So like that's obviously their big cash cow here. So that's interesting. Yeah. Like because I've I've always sort of known most of the story for uh what you may call it, what happened to Chinzilla into Congregate into Monumental. Cause like everyone knows the story of Monumental now where it's like, oh, they're they're a company that takes 
for lack of better term, dead or dying games and then revives the community and uh, like they re-enable the games to basically thrive again, uh, more pragmatically make money again. Because like with Little Alchemist, it was like i don't want to say it was very easy for them to turn a profit there was like a decent team that had to work on little alchemist to remake it so that it meets the new security and safety standards for the app store and blah 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 yada yada basically uh as soon as they started releasing packs they turned a profit but to get to the point where they were able to release packs was a whole process. Yeah. I mean, so that, like, that's the thing. You know, it was built in an era where smartphones weren't ubiquitous. Yeah. And the code was largely unupdated from that. So like part of part of me building the optimizer is I was ripping through all of their code. Yeah. Like, it was it was not encrypted it you know it was compiled in the default settings any any uh decompiler for an ipa which is like the file extension for an ios app yep. could just open it right up all of the card images were just straight pngs um all of the like library data was in a, like a very very common file format um and that's, I mean, it was great for me. It was yeah. great for me when, you know, when I just wanted to update the library data, I'd just download the new app, um, decompile it, rip out what I needed. Um, I mean, that's, that was kind of, you know, I, I did this all with Monumental's permission, of course. They knew I was doing this. Yeah. Um, but like yeah. I'll I'll slip in here and put on my uh, exploiter hat here because uh, during the dead era, one of the things I found for Little Alchemist constantly were APK files for Android, where you could literally just download a hacked version of the game, like really easily. You would get you would get flagged by the game just as easily sometimes, but like it didn't take that smart of a programmer or that smart of an exploiter or a hacker or anything like that to get past the really simple system of the flag system in Little Alchemist. And then like yeah. a, a large part of my claim to fame in the Little Alchemist Discord server was literally how I found a way to remove the flag off of people's phones so that they could get a fresh start in Little Alchemist. Like Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Like like that was that was the thing. I I only ever learned how to do it for iPhone. For Android, it was even simpler if I remember correctly where all you had to do was completely wipe the game data from your system, which Android has capabilities of doing, where iPhone, it's like a lot more restrictive and stuff like that. Yeah, everything's but I, extra steps on iPhone. Yeah, I had never done it myself because first off, I didn't have an Android at that time. And second off, I had no way of testing whether or not this actually worked or not. But I assumed it worked because like the flagging system in Little Alchemist was not that uh sophisticated it was really really bare bones uh but i'm glad i can talk about it now because if we were still in the old little alchemist app i'd have to be like oh gosh shut the fuck up because yeah like like it's like i can i can reveal information about the flagging system and oh my god now we have like 500 new time exploiters like like it was yeah really it was easy. all honor system yeah i mean the the, the checks were really really stupid yeah. um to the point where you could by legitimate means trip them yeah and then because the support was so minimal like you would You're be just punished done. yeah like that's what happened to tap right his no, no, no. He, it, his account didn't get flagged. It just got lost, which is also very bad for different reasons. But, like, literally, like, there was just, oh, hey, uh, my account got logged out of 
because I was doing YouTube content, uh, hey, can you guys help me get my old account? They're like, oh, lol, oopsies, we can't. And it's like, oh, so like his account was gone for a long period of time there. And the reason why yeah. he had left the game, you know this as well as I do, where like he left because like all he had was underdog left and like un he still played on underdog and stuff like that but it wasn't his main account that had hundreds of dollars worth of cards on it it was just wild that something like that could happen which just really goes to show the era that little alchemist was made in yeah i mean yeah it would have been fine had it still been supported yeah um so like one of the one of the things that you could do to get your count permanently locked was accumulate too many gems yeah. which is like the premium currency well you can accumulate the gems in game and like i know a lot of other competitive card games will like have essentially like a shadow currency that's exactly the same as the one you pay for but if you earn it in the game it's somehow slightly not as good they didn't do that a gem was a gem you needed so many to buy a pack. Um, I don't remember what the numbers were. They've kind of inflated the market um, a little bit. Monumental has just as a yeah. business decision. Um, they also reward, reward you much more heavily to compensate for that inflation. But yeah. Um, so I don't remember what the prices were all set at, but you could just earn them in the game. Like even with it in a completely dead state, you could still earn gems. Yeah. And then if you piled up too many, uh, like literally count a dead like it was yep one this happened to jark when uh what you may call it monumental had just reacquired the game and like they changed the gem pricings go go figure jark is the one to have found the flag for what your max amount of gems was which we Wasn't found two thousand it was three thousand three thousand once you passed <laughs> three thousand gems because okay this is also another thing I will clarify for all the new Little Alchemist players. So what happened with the gems and the prices is that so your 250 gems now were equivalent to 25 gems before. So if you had 25 gems in the dead era, as I like to call it, when Monumental did the inflation where they times 10 everything, so all premium packs got times 10 their price, all gems got times 10 their price, what happened was... Uh, yeah yeah so the prices got fixed i'm like my god scatterbrain but uh 25 gems equals 250 now so when we're saying 3000 gems now that's the equivalent of 30000 gems that's that's where i was getting with that <laughs> yeah yeah it was several hundred dollars worth if you were to just buy it yep and God, Jark did. God bless his heart. He <laughs> he he found that flag for the the saviors of everyone's accounts around the globe who wanted to wail on the game and not have to deal with flagging. But I just, oh my God, Jark! I need. To, I'll, I'm gonna have to do another podcast with Jark eventually because there's so many freaking funny stories we have but anyways back to yeah, back to you and old yeah. era uh so i have a, a question about how packs worked way back when they were first released because uh i only saw hey, hey. Way south of us. can i gotta interrupt you yeah, i don't yeah. know if you can hear that i literally I... have a tornado siren going off oh okay <laughs> I'll hold on you... one second I, yeah. i'm gonna evaluate I'll... the weather i might need to relocate got it i'll let you deal with that all right well i'm good as far as like tornadoes go <laughs> that's why but I, the tornado siren like there there's one in the area but it's not anywhere like actually close to me but they've i don't know if you can hear the siren but it's i can hear like little blips of it but like once yeah. again like i said when our discord chat i'm not too worried about audio quality this is just <laughs> i'm just a guy doing this for fun so 
All right. Well, I'm sorry I made your editing harder because you'll have to oh, cut out no, some it, dead air. Oh, no, it'll be very easy because I get to look at the audio and then the area where there's no audio, I get to just cut that out and done. <laughs> Video editing. Easy mode. Yep. So what what was i asking pax that's right pax of the before era the initial uh little alchemist because i have no idea because premium pax obviously they had gold combo cards but there is a time where premium pax didn't even come with onyx combo cards because onyx combo cards didn't exist yet i like i want i do you do you were you a part of like the era of Little Alchemist where packs were like that? Before the release of Onyx combo cards? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, that was the that was after Fusion Powers, but prior to Onyx Final Forms. And that was potentially so was that after the second area of the map too? I have no idea because like it's weird to think about now where Little Alchemist I mean Monumental's updating the game now but we haven't had like proper new content in Little Alchemist for a long time right but I I don't know what the timeline was between first map second map what like I even realized there was a time before fusion powers is my information that I'm going off of here. So yeah, so when when they first launched, I'm pretty sure it was the town or the first map that was complete. There was no portal. The so no portal means no gold combo cards at all. When the game first launched, it was bronze and silver combo cards. And then the final forms all had three orb powers because there was no five orb powers available. Oh, shoot. We yeah, I to... saw that too. Okay. Um, but anyway, from there, they added the portal which then introduced gold combo cards and the five orb powers, the boosted versions of um, like critical strike absorb all of those. Like that's when those were introduced because you have to have a gold combo card in order to make those. Yeah. Cause yeah, even the gold final forms that were originally released, um, they still have the three orb powers or the two orb powers now that it's been fully updated. Um, and then the way the heroics portal worked, or not heroics, just the event portal worked, is it was a one-time, in real time, launch. And so, like, if you missed it, it was gone forever. Oh my God. Uh, so that's the era that I joined in. So I joined, like, somewhere in the, like, initial release of like the wind card or the time card. It was pretty early um, into it. And then like every couple of months they would have another event and you could play through the event. And then it would like, that's how they were doling it out. There wasn't even premium packs. <laughs> um, once they ran through that 10, then they realized, well, this is really unfair to anyone new joining because those those were just gone forever. And so then what they did is every person got an individual timer um, based on when they unlocked the portal. And it started that person with bear then, the bear event, and then you worked through the 10, but it was still one time. And so there was constant discussion of, should I reset my account to maximize my like portal rewards which i actually ended up doing i i create i played the game enough to have a level 100 account which is not much of an achievement anymore i assume um and then wiped it and restarted just so i could redo all 10 of those events and maximize on that now that 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 portal loops it's it's nowhere near as of a big deal 
Yeah. See, I was also, because uh, I'll talk about the era I was in of the dead era where I came in when the game had lost its support from uh, Congregate and uh, by extension, Chinzilla, or I should say the other way around. But anyways, so uh, yeah, I was also in the era of like, you get one chance through the portals and I had like, accounts first off i had a flagged account which was flagged because i did uh oopsies baddie uh time exploits on my uh phone way back in like 2014 i want to say no not that long ago no way but anyways uh so <laughs> i had the flagged account which is how i which was when i discovered the um unflagging process because that was on my main phone at the time where i was like okay if i want to play this game i want to play it on my main phone so let's see if i can figure this out use all of my brain power because this game is like so old that there's probably something they overlooked with the flagging system and lo and behold i was correct but anyways no the strat of the dead era was you don't complete the fourth area until you have a deck of like fully researched silver combo card bronze combo cards that were like all level four minimum and if you're really cautious you had like maybe one or two gold final forms as well that were uh not fused you didn't need to have a fused gold final form but like some leveled up ones like like that was that was a wild era and i mean that's that is the longest era of lil alchemist where now we have all of these quality of life updates of the portal is cycling constantly and now you don't have to worry about uh <laughs> the the goblin system got oh, improved yeah. so dramatically where now before it was one onyx goblin every what four months or six months i think it was four months with if you were lucky it being like around three and yeah <laughs> that is just like like the time scale it took to get a fully upgraded deck in Little Alchemist was like literally years. And like Jokovic had been playing for literally years and he didn't like he only got his Onyx Final Forms level five fairly recently with all of the revamps on that and stuff like that. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it was definitely a very slow paced game. And, it, you know, to give a time scale on this, if you go back and you look at the Little Alchemist Helper old videos, I'm pretty sure we did videos covering best deck pre-portal. Yep. Um, and, like, that in today's context, like, why would you bother? Like, yep. Like, there's there's no like, point. <laughs> yeah, there's no point. Like, you would never grind a decent deck and it's like no you have to you have to grind this really good deck before you unlock the portal on these four like these well i guess it's more than four bosses it was like 12 bosses you could fight yeah um in order to like actually be able to get the rewards out of the portal because if you miss them they're gone forever yeah and so yeah that was a huge quality of life and i don't think that quality of life came until after monumental bought the game yeah like, monumental no, no, no. It, it was a fairly recent development like fairly recent air quotes like it's been like what a year and a half two years now since we've had the new system but like <laughs> it's it's hard to stress to like new players of the game just how how bad it was you know like no it, i loved it yeah i loved it i mean you're right it was it was objectively bad but um that was the I, charm yeah it was it was an acquired taste yeah okay <laughs> hold on let's pause quickly so i can reset up this stupid zoom meeting and then we get another 40 minutes <laughs> perfect hopefully we won't be interrupted by tornado sirens this time all right i'll <laughs> drop and i'll wait for a new code Okay.
and we're back <laughs> yep okay you can hear. but yeah okay charm of the old game because like i can i'm gonna start busting out my fancy terms of like emergent qualities of the game but like a lot of the charm of because i i also enjoyed old little alchemist but granted my enjoyment of it was more of the like the seedy underbelly of it of like what are all these exploits that are just going on behind closed curtains that like a lot of people because okay it was a surprising amount of people who were exploiting in the dead era who weren't getting flagged but uh anyways i want to hear more about why you enjoyed like old little alchemist's charm if you have like a way of describing it up if not it's just like yeah vibes <laughs> i mean it's not it's not just like vibes but so i mean there's been like this newer game on that's been trending on twitch and i should have looked at the name of it but like you put two things together and it makes a new thing oh in infinite fusion infinite alchemy. yes okay it's 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 an alchemy game like alchemy games existed prior to little alchemist and it was the exact same thing as infinite fusion infinite Just... craft okay sure sure i wanted a game called alchemist but it was only available on android so <laughs> when i searched for that on ios I got the same game, but rather than dragging and dropping little bubbles, it's now a card game with a story and research. And it's like, that's what I wanted. That's the whole thing I wanted. I wanted to put the two things together and get something new. And like, it's dumb. Like, you know, it, it's like explaining a joke. It's not funny anymore. Um, but that's what I wanted. Like, like, I was looking for a version of that. Oh, I, I've already lost the name because the, the, the fusion that I could play via the app store but it didn't exist because that wasn't only available on android um and so i was like well whatever i'll start playing this and then it's like oh there's a story here oh like there's there's progression there's milestones there's you know there's definitely a a bunch of things that you can do to give yourself an edge so like when I really started taking things apart, it was like reverse calculating, like which bosses give the highest rewards. Like that's like just a fun little puzzle. Like here's a couple variables, you know, what what's like the best case outcome for this? And it's like, well, then I could put that on the forum and then like there was a community and, and you know, you and Shark talk about this. Like there's not an infinite amount of content in Little Alchemist. The i think the what keeps people around playing it is is ultimately the community um and you know back in the day it was just a, a congregate forum and then it eventually um a, you know we jumped to discord i know there's a reddit as well um i'm not much of a reddit reddit user so i'm not over there um i'm not much of a discord user either if i'm going to be fully honest but it was really the the community that like drove me to stick around um and like uh, one of the things that i wish they'd bring back is you could play live with an opponent had like if you coordinated it that one that was like one of the more requested features of like the game suggestions channel which has oh Oh, there's so much. Oh my god. I love that channel for the amount of controversy and all of the shit storms it's caused, but that's also stories for another day. But anyways, <laughs> but yeah, uh no, cuz th that's wild that you had found Little Alchemist by like looking up Alchemist on the app store or whatever, cuz I'm pretty sure uh, I need I'm, I need to dig deep into my memories here because I'm pretty sure the way I found Little Alchemist was I had looked up another alchemy game and it showed up and I'm like, oh, this looks like fun. Or alternatively, like I can't remember which one of these memories is correct. Like my cousin comes up to me and is like, hey, you should play this game. And I'm like, okay. 
whatever we will because it didn't require internet support and like we we didn't have wi-fi when my cousin and i would hang out with each other because we would visit each other when we were at like in the rural outback with no wi-fi at that point in time so no that <laughs> that's just uh funny but uh where is my transition here there's like two things that i want to talk about where it's like your contributions to the game you talked about how you had reverse engineered effectively reverse engineered i don't think that's quite the right term but like you had found what the most efficient bosses to grind were and like there's all of the tables and stuff like that they're still floating around somewhere today and i don't know if they're they were updated that's right and it just was found that like dr robo is still the most efficient but you yeah, have the found... only variable that changed was the energy required and it didn't change it by enough yeah. to really swing anything which like go figure because the only way it could have maybe have changed it is if one of the later islands somehow got more efficient with the energy changes but it it didn't it ended up like it was a consistent change across all of the bosses so it was a consistent change of like which boss is best to grind and stuff like that but uh oh yeah like that you've had and then we cannot go without saying your contributions to the little alchemist helper channel where you've done several videos about uh either i remember one of the videos i watched of yours way back when was discussing the baseball bat reflection strategy in arena or to farm Dr. not Dr. Otto, to farm Otto because the 25 damage crushing blow was very valuable when your opponents only have 30 HP. And the like it it, it must be said that this strat has become slightly less efficient nowadays because A there's now easier access to diamond final forms with the rotating portals and right. more frequent diamond goblins. And B, you're very... If you're trying to get into masters, you will encounter 30 HP people, but it's not your fights against 30 HP people that will determine whether you get masters or not. It's your fight against 55 HP people. <laughs> yeah yeah well and see now that they turned on defensive scoring it's like can i take away my 55 hp can i turn that down yeah like at least on my defensive deck because i you know my hp is shown and yep. so because i don't play very much i'm i'm kind of in the dregs i'm in the bottom no one in their right mind whether or not they recognize my name or not would click on a 55 when there are other two options they're going to be in the 30s or 40s yeah like like, I think since they've released that, and it's been a couple of days, I don't know how long this will actually take to get to YouTube, but, like, it's only been a couple of days. Since they've released that, I think I've earned five stars um, <laughs> from defensive victories. And, I, you know, I, I haven't looked into, like, what the, the most effective tactics on that are, but I'm literally running, um, like, just a auto, like, in-game, auto generated deck just to see what it would do um with the fusion power that gives you an extra orb slot so it's green i'm like maybe people will click on the green decks because the green decks aren't as hard to beat as the red and the blue ones <laughs> um and it, it it hasn't been working like no one yeah. clicks on that I, you, you see the 55 hp and it's like that's 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 a wall like I'm, i can't beat that I, I completely forgot that they had just introduced that change because like okay the reason why i was like much to my dismay i'm recording in our podcast episode is because i don't play little alchemist anymore i literally play little alchemist to get footage for this podcast like that was the last time i played little alchemist was to get footage for the podcast between Jark and I, and it's gonna be the same thing as well. Like I haven't touched the game since I played it for that, and now I'm gonna to have to touch it again to like actually record the footage to then do for the podcast, which is like that's just 
<laughs> so I like I'm not that current with what the m most recent metas are and stuff like that either and I'm at the bomb as well but like my HP is slightly less intimidating a whole whopping 45 HP which <laughs> like to the 30 HP new players 45 HP and 55 HP don't make a whole lot of a difference no I mean not yeah you know, well, the other thing is it tells you, it's like if, if someone's got 45 HP or, or 55 HP, odds are that also indicates that they have a deck full of fused combo cards, if not a deck full of Onyx combo cards and, and you know, decent final forms that are likely also fused. Because, like, that... I, that's it's got to be tough for new players yeah um like it has to be tough getting in there um and honestly there isn't a good solution like if 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 it was me running it i would flood the arena with bots <laughs> like, like like in all honesty i would flood the arena with bots that have decks that range from you know mostly level three cards up to you know, and then, you know, level three, level four, mostly level four, some with level four and level five, some with five infused cards. And then, and then from there, let the, the player base take over. That's an and interesting. don't make, don't make it obvious, but put like 500 of each of those decks in there and just use some algorithm to churn up a bunch of silly usernames so it doesn't obvious who give them a random alchemy power or give them um an appropriate amount of hp so it's not at all obvious and so that like you can work your way up because i i think that you very quickly hit a wall of these decks are done like yeah. like i don't need to put de de any dust into a deck like my yeah. decks are done um and so if you aren't there because you just started playing the game three weeks ago when you're like well, i can play in the arena like it's not going to take very long because of how quickly you can earn stars and how the like matchmaking system works yeah before you're you're batting well beyond you know your your deck strength and like that's frustrating yeah like that's really frustrating that's like that's always been an interesting thing with little alchemist where it's like there isn't really a skill edge right like it's really hard to play your deck better than somebody else to like get more wins right like it's not like magic the gathering where sure there is like an investment cost where like you need to get these cards to be a part of the meta but then once you get the cards the way you pilot the deck the way you play the deck is going to determine a lot more whether you're going to win or not little alchemist does not have that or it has that to such a marginal degree that like all you got to do is open up your wallet and you can overcome it instantly right yeah and i like, mean and i think that's that's true for a lot of card games yeah like that's the most most competitive card games are pay to win um and i understand what you're saying about the strategy if you want to just try and win via hp knockout i'd say that's true there there's definitely nuance to playing tiebreaker there's definitely nuance to playing lobo and i mean you, you've known that because you yeah. were one of the early promote uh promoters for lobo um it you like that's one of the things where it's like even with the the optimizer it's like people are like oh give me a deck score it's like i can't like i like i can i can give you a number but it doesn't mean anything because yep. it's like um you can build two separate decks that are both equally viable in the arena one that relies pretty much solely on attack and one that relies pretty much solely on defense and depending on what you do with those you know they're both potentially viable yeah. um 
a lot of the skill edge in Little Alchemist. I do agree. Okay, when I say there's ugh, no skill edge, I should clarify. There's no skill edge. No skill edge. There's a lot less of a skill edge when you're actually facing the opponent, right? Your decision tree is pretty simplified of like, try to get to your five orb. It's been complex. It's been, there's been more complexity added with the new first off absorb and then second off people's defensive decks uh, evolving to include absorb cards and curse cards and prot cards and stuff like that. So the game has definitely gained more complexity and now i think previously my statement of there's no skill edge is just false there's definitely a skill edge now it's just like like i i always compare it to like other competitive games even the other competitive card games you you can see that little alchemist sort of like how good you are at playing the game determines how high you place a lot less what determines what your placement in the game is is a lot more how much money and time you've invested right yeah Which... and one thing i will say that's positive is you can very easily replace money with time yeah which is not true for a lot of competitive card games yeah a lot well, of them it's just straight money like yeah so before i would argue that that wasn't true but now with the shop literally giving you random diamond final form cards that you can purchase for free and also the improvements to goblins and stuff like that free to play players are thriving especially compared to how the game was before oh my yeah. gosh <laughs> yeah i would say so when when support dropped um when when support dropped from chinzilla i'd say the highest rank true free-to-play player in the arena um was maybe maybe eking out a, top, a spot in the top 30. um and this was also a much smaller player base uh it's probably it's probably about the same as today um but i'd say either the same size or smaller player base. I I know for a fact that like there are some of those old free to play players still floating around that, you know, if they wanted to, they could easily go hit top ten. Yeah. Um see I don't remember correctly or not, but I was under the impression that Fishpang was a free-to-play player. I know he had a Wolf Warrior and stuff like that, but from what I remember hearing about him, it was that he had literally just saved up all of his gems when packs were still in rotation, and he had just bought whatever pack freaking wolf warrior was in i don't remember what was it it doesn't matter but like but i i would have to double check that information so you uh i do agree that like the free to play grind before was actually so brutal oh my god because if you didn't have diamond final forms if you didn't get lucky with your portal key pulls and if you've never gone lucky with like your diamond goblins you were you were facing Jokovic with like an auto and a dream like <laughs> yeah there's no there was no chance yeah and then that's where the counter-attack meta came into play because that was effectively the only way for both free-to-play players and newer players to stand a chance in the top 100 when they start streaking and start running into people like Tap Dog's deck or Fishpang decks or ABS yeah. or ABSP's deck or Potato's deck. Everyone avoided Potato's deck, though. People were able to beat it, but uh, that it took a lot of luck. <laughs> I don't know if I ever beat Potato. I know I, I joked about it on live streams a couple of times. I don't know if I ever actually accomplished it. Yeah. Because, like, that's the thing. Like, I, I, I'll i admit I'm not free to play. I have given them money. Yeah. Um, but it is not on the scale 
of of a lot of those other people that you just listed um <laughs> yeah um for one thing i live in an area where the cost of living is significantly lower meaning um it's effectively more expensive for me to buy things online um apps included and it's just like i can't i can't justify <laughs> i can't justify this um which i mean that i guess back to the you know what was the draw that's like i can be decently competitive with very very monetary input uh or very very limited monetary input and um just like i had the time you know like i was i was fortunate to have found it um when i did and so it's like i have I have the history and then it's just a matter of okay we got to make this as lean as possible make this um you know as 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 competitive as possible with what i have and then you know i i doubt anyone has the history on this but like you can watch the like disparity between me and tap dogs like commentary about card packs um for it's like anytime I reviewed a pack, it was like always positive. It was like, oh, this card, this card would be great. This card would be great. It's like for a really long time, I was competitively running um, a, uh, like a, no, like, dang it, I can't think of the card's name, but it was a 2430 crushing blow. Like, which it's crazy to think that theme of, um, the definitely not Gyarados card being viable came from. I was like, this card is 100% viable. And Tap was, he he had access to better ones. And he's like, why on earth would you ever play that? And I was like, you don't understand. Like, this is literally the best one that I have. I love definitely not Pokemon. And, you know, definitely put all my resources into getting the quote unquote not Pokemon. Um, and so I have the, the, definitely not uh Zapdos and the definitely not Gyarados and I still run those cards just because I love like I legitimately enjoy the intellectually intellectual property free versions of them and they're good enough like they are good enough and that was always my point um and so like if you go watch some of those really old videos I'm just like yeah I'm gonna go kill tap dogs deck with this with this water serpent like <laughs> um or not water serpent that's the combo card the final form the uh, water water dragon yeah i think i'll i'll put up a see I'm, I'm probably gonna actually do a bit more fancy editing than i usually do for this video where like i'll actually put up images of like water dragon and like try and get some old screenshots of what the before era of the game was like and stuff like that because it will be interesting to give visuals for people who had have never seen it or experienced that right like there's still images on the internet floating around of just the first islands without the sign to go to the second islands because the second islands didn't exist yet the sign didn't need to exist yeah 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 those those definitely still exist um you can also find where uh chinzilla got themselves in hot water because they towed the line too closely on copyright infringement yeah with adventure kid or something like that i remember that yeah. was one of them there so adventure kid used to have a white hood yep and it was too close um there was like the it's the whole knock off and like i shouldn't you know, i always make jokes on on uh, little alchemist helper it's like definitely not this thing yeah because it, it it definitely is but it's like that used to just be called like hulking or something like that <laughs> and you can still to this day in the remastered version go find um if you can get it decompiled you can still go find the original names for all of the ones that like they they you know they flew too close to the sun and then they have a field that overwrites the name um <laughs> because that was just how they handled it anytime they got too close they used that to overwrite the name and that's the name that you see um it also caused major issues when they wanted to release the the hybrid gold combo card oh, yeah. uh, because there was already a hybrid final form which i think is now called wear vamp yep um and so 
inside the game data, where vamp is still just hybrid and hybrid is actually listed as hybrid combo. Um, and then there's like a translation that occurs. Like, I only know this because it broke the optimizer so hard <laughs> when they did that. And then it's like, oh, here's the whole list of every time they almost got in trouble. See, let's, I feel as if I should, we should talk about the optimizer now. The holy grail for competitive little alchemist players. Because I, it's funny to say, but the optimizer represents your ability to solve little alchemist competition. Like it is just numbers and numbers that literally tell you how strong all of these cards are when put together which yeah. has <laughs> there's been so many funny things with the optimizer through the years cuz first off there's a barrier to entry to use the optimizer where you need to be able to have access to uh Google Excel <laughs> Yeah, Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel, not Google Excel. That's that's just an alternate ver timeline version of me. Uh, excuse that. Anyways. <laughs> there was a Google Sheets version, and I don't think it's supported anymore, but I yeah. did make a Google Sheets version. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, like, it's, it, it's nice that the optimizer is still being supported as well because... Like, we've had so many backfills and new cards now where it's just, like, if the optimizer just needs to be updated to have new information. Like, my deck, I last optimized it, I think, two years and a half ago. And it is so horrifyingly out of date now just because of all of the backfills that got introduced and all of the new cards. And I'm like, I no longer know what the best Onyx combo cards are for stall decks just because there's new Onyx combo cards that uh, throw their hat into the ring. And it's like, okay, well, maybe uh, Fairy Tale Onyx is better than uh, Food Onyx and you should prioritize that more. And it's like, wow. So much stuff has happened because of the optimizer. And uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure what to talk about with the optimizer. So I'll just start with like, what got you to make the optimizer? Like where, where's the start of the optimizer story? Because we've already talked about how you've like did the information for what bosses to grind and stuff like that. Was the optimizer born out of sort of the same mindset of like min maxing everything in the game, including your deck? Or was it just like, I want to see what cards are best. So I'll make this tool. You actually hit the nail like directly on the head. Version one of the optimizer wasn't a deck optimizer. So like right now the current version is a version four, um, version four dot whatever whatever based on like the combo data that's injected on the back end. So version one was exactly what you're describing. It's which boss should I fight, um, based on um, the the probability of getting a card versus coin payout, how much coins you did get, and how much energy it took to uh, collect that or to like initiate the fight. And I think I even went as far as calculating how frequently you would get um, energy refills from leveling up. Um, so that, that was just version one. Version one was that, and then like a full database of all of the cards. And like, that was me just like dipping my toe in the water of like ripping apart Apple apps. <laughs> um version two then started looking at decks um and it was like the most dumb way possible i mean probably not the most dumb but it like would uh, see I'm, I'm gonna get two and three confused because i just like haven't looked at them in a decade but uh, one of them literally took every possible five card hand you could make and then would output 
the probabilities of generating a locked hand, meaning no combo available. So like what drove that is way back then before all the backfills, cards didn't just combine with everything. Like, yeah. like having a card that combined with 70 other cards was really, really good. I mean, and part of that is there's a lot more combo cards in there now, but I think hybrid is up to like almost 140. And so it was more just like, I can't keep track mentally what's, um, what's viable and what's not. So it would, it would generate a list of every possible hand. Um, so like in a 35 card deck, like the number of possible hands, it's 35 times 34 times 33 times 32 times 31. Yeah, you stop there. It's not the full factorial. Um, and it's like some five or six digit number. And then it would evaluate every single one of those lines as an independent thing. And it would tell you um, which cards was in it and whether or not the hand was locked. And then it would output, here's the card that's in the most locked hands. And so like, that's how that worked. And it was really computational heavy. It was really slow. Yeah. Um, it was like massive to try and share on the internet. You're like um, describing this thing. And I'm like, I'm trying to imagine like my old school PC trying to run this computation on Excel. Like even like a decently powerful device, it would still take it at least what around I I. I'm so bad at guesstimating. About seven it. minutes. Yeah. Like that's a while for every individual card. <laughs> yeah. So you would load the full deck and then you hit go. And then it would go, here are your worst five. And so you take those out and it wouldn't tell you what to try because it didn't know. Like, <laughs> so it's just so like, you oh. would just you would just have to try so many permutations of new bottom five cards until like either you've landed on a deck that's like pretty you're very happy with where like it only results in one locked hand in a million or if you land on a just a, a theoretical perfect deck where it is the absolute epitome of card strength i guess well, so or... I, I to give you some context no one locked hand would be that like perfect thing i was aiming for like 80 percent like one in That's five right. hands because one in five because like i i always forget that like turkey day turkey day was the standard before it's backfills i should say turkey days pitiful what was it like 64 combos that resulted in diamond not counting like silver and bronze right. combos like that was an okay card <laughs> yeah so we eventually or i eventually got it to be a lot faster um with the like version four that's the one that everyone's seen that's the one that i've done youtube videos i didn't start the youtube channel until after i had put out version four and that had garnered a lot of positive attention on on the forum um so like that's the one that you've that you've all seen where it like act it builds the deck as you go um that one it it's much easier to use and it's much easier to you know you're not just guessing and checking I, yeah know, for all intents and purposes it's easier to see what your card's overall strength is contributing to your deck with the current version of the optimizer granted yeah. there's like the whole thing where like oh my god i still I never understood this. I don't know if it was just like you had set an arbitrary amount for like fusion buff, but the 200% fusion buff, I was always like, huh? What? It's too strong. Yeah. <laughs> Way it's too not, powerful. <laughs> it's not arbitrary. It's actually controlled based on how much 
how many other fused cards. So like if your whole deck is fused, it falls off quite a bit. Yeah. But then every unfused card you add, it starts buffing it back up higher and higher. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been playing with it again. And with how many, like, with the current state, well, and one, now that there's four orb abilities, like, it's it's set way too high by default. Um, yeah. If I, you know, not if, I'm working on the version 5.0, it's going to look and feel and act like version 4, but, like, it will be... Um, the back end will be different enough that it's just going to be a full version release different. Um, but that's one of the things that I know I need to change is the fusion buff is way too strong. Yeah. Because like my my stats brain saw this 200% and it was like, okay, a fused card? Because like, like what you would often end up having is like your Onyx combo cards would get kicked out by like the weakest fuse gold combo card. So like even though your Onyx combo card like comboed with I would say like 90% of your deck, it would try and suggest like something like Turkey Day that's fused that combos with like 40% of your deck just because of how inflated the numbers become with the 200 percent yeah yeah i mean it was it was a it was a tool that i tried to make um available for anyone you know you could start yeah. with all, level ones all the way through and it's just like finding it like good middle grounds was so difficult but yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely could have been done even even now like there's no right or wrong answer for what's the correct fusion amount right like it really really depends like do you have a lot of uh unfused onyx combo cards but you really need to get to your three or four orb or five orb then you might want like a higher fusion buff but if you have a lot of fused cards already and you're more trying to find what the optimal combination of these cards are then you want to reduce your fusion buff I have run the optimizer with a fusion buff as low as 105% and as high as 145%. Uh, I forget what the context for what the 105% was. I think I was just curious to see what like a deck that focused more on optimal combos performed as in a tiebreaker rather than just maximizing orbs and also before we can <laughs> is like such unfortunate timing the whole discord goes down the day that we were planning on doing this and i'm like no anyways it's fine I'm glad my organization at least gives me 40 minute Zoom meetings because I think the the lowest it can be is like 20 minutes. Either way, I digress. But yeah, the optimizer, fusion bus, that was always like that was always a funny thing that like I used it to sniff out people who knew what they were talking about with deck building or not, where it's like if they thought that your fused cards were 200% more valuable than unfused cards. I'm like, haha, I'm not going to listen to you. Because, like, from a, from a purely uh, just, like, thinking about it perspective, I can understand how people land to that assumption. Because fused cards are two cards fused into one. Like, like it makes sense to think that 200% would be equate two cards being fused into one mega card that's more powerful than the two individually but the effects of the card does not equate to 200 percent more strength in the card right right the last you know the last thing i'll i'll defend that with when that was actually set onyx cards were not in the game oh yeah <laughs> And so the whole tactic. This one's like by Pioneer's Park. All right, I might have to get to a basement. I'll, okay. So I'll, um, I'll wrap. I'll wrap up this thought, and then we can drop it. Um, 
the whole the whole race was who could get to five orbs. Yeah. When, when 4.0 dropped, it was get to five orbs because your opponent only has 30 HP. There is no other option yeah. in the arena. And then nuke them. And under those circumstances... 200 made sense. Yep. It because, was still and, inflated, but it's still, like, it was so important that getting to those five orbs, you would sacrifice combo strength just to get those orbs. Yeah, because you didn't really need to survive. Like, the the, the matchmaking was so short, you, you know, it was it was who got their their critical strike off or crushing blow off first. Um, and in the event of a tie, you know, it, it's going to just be a tie. There was, there was very little that you could realistically do to defend against that. And so, yeah, you would, you would shoot yourself in the foot if even one in five of your cards weren't fused, the odds of that giving you two consecutive forced hands in a row where, um, where you'd be forced to only generate two orbs like that, that could equal a loss yeah, and likely would if you were playing at the top. Now, like I said, we're, we're I've got I've got a pretty decent group of beta testers, and I was hoping to get some information over to them today. But with this weather, I might not. Um, that's one of the things that we're going to look at because that hasn't been looked at since the introduction of Onyx cards. And like that, you know, I retrofitted the optimizer to incorporate them, but I, you know, things like that in the advanced controls that never got updated. Yeah. Yeah, there's like <laughs> the like because like there's it's you can't I I can't level criticisms at the optimizer beyond like the two hundred percent one, and it's not even like a criticism of the optimizer. It's more of a criticism of the people who don't understand the optimizer properly. Where it's like this is just like it's a passion thing. Like you made this for fun. You aren't being paid to make the optimizer. This was purely yeah. something you've done out of your own goodwill and free time because you could have very easily have kept the optimizer to yourself and just used it as like a huge edge on deck building to be better than like basically everyone else at your level and like <laughs> like people do stuff like that in other competitive games all the time where they just find something and they keep it as quiet as possible until it inevitably gets out so it's like like i i i very much commend you for giving this resource to the community of like completely free like people yeah, yeah. would people would pay to have access to the optimizer but that is no, definitely silly. a thing <laughs> <laughs> like uh, okay so sure we'll we'll date this a little bit more patreon was never even considered primarily because it didn't exist yeah you know, that's how people would like paywall like this kind of thing if you yeah, wanted yeah. to i mean you could argue that i've monetized it a little bit with youtube uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah i i make no money from the optimizer um you know i might i if i put out 5.0 i might put it behind an ad on youtube um but again that's going to be really easily avoidable and yeah. ultimately free to whoever like i've considered it but ultimately the whole drive to this thing is always a community like that's yeah the, it, it's a really similar sentiment that jark had um th this community is is worth supporting you know it's it's a lot like a speed running community and and that was oh my goodness that's a failed attempt that i do not want to go into i know it still <laughs> exists on the discord server but it's like a speed running community where it's like yeah everyone's competing everyone's trying to do the best that they can but it has this feel where we're all like exploring these concepts together yeah um... oh but um, I'm, I'm probably going to have to drop. Um, I don't want to like dox myself with 
with the like weather nerds if people really <laughs> want to figure it out but i like legit now have a tornado in my area so all right uh i'm gonna head to the basement and um i'll let you go turn off all my right. electronics before i get them all cooked all right this is a good place to end as well <laughs> a nice upbeat thing and it was nice having you on the podcast man thank you yeah, so thanks much for having me all yep. right we'll uh you know if you got any more or uh, you want to do like a, another collab or something like that, always reach out. Um, I'm, I'm certainly happy to support. So um, thanks <laughs> I know where me. to find you. All right. Good talking to you. Bye. Bye.